What you say? Megabutt? Megabutt. <laughs> Mega butt. Mega butt. Butt, butt, butt. Mega butt. <laughs> Tell me you're recording right now. I am. That... <laughs> I'm absolutely recording, Ashley. You are. No, no, no. No, I'm saying. No, no we're doing the. I'm doing the. I'm going to go with. He does me- that so he can intentionally catch us saying dumb shit and then use it as like the intro. Yep. Because I'll like call Alex a piece of shit and then the episode starts. Alex, you piece of shit. Hey, you know what this last one's going to start <laughs> with? You talking about cat buttholes. <laughs> Good. <laughs> <laughs> well. No, see, that's in context. I was talking about how in cartoons, for some reason, all it's like a thing well, with animators I've where met, they have to draw cat assholes. Enough with the the cat assholes, I, I will, guess. Okay. Can, yeah. can I bring up cat assholes no. in the Mandalorian? I, you know what? Any way you can think of to work it in there. All right, what's up, guys? Uh, this is a supplement episode to the Blitzkrieg Pop, and we're all full of tacos, and like the Visceral Girls we are, we're ready to talk. We're going to talk Mandalorian. Ah, the Star Wars ban has been lifted. I have peeled the corner off of the Star Wars ban, specifically because the show is so good, I can't imagine anyone hating it. And that's not fair, but all right, we'll get to that at another time. <laughs> Hello, I just wanted to introduce, uh, I'm Adam, I'm sitting here with my beautiful wife, Lindsay. Lindsay. I'm yeah. his beautiful friend, AJ. <laughs> <laughs> you guys do have the same hair color. Yes. Actually, same, we do, yeah. Same haircut, same <laughs> style. Same haircut. Yeah, like we part it different, otherwise it's identical. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. You guys are both beautiful. I know it. <laughs> so we're going to talk Mandalorian, but but before we do that, I just want to say congratulations to DC for finally pulling off a billion dollar comic book movie. Good job, guys. I they, have no comment. The congratulations is actually real and heartfelt. Now let's get to the meat and potatoes of this, though. We're talking about the Mandalorian. Yeah. Thankfully, the second episode of this came out just in time, so we're not just rolling off of one episode here. But Yeah, we're, we are two in so far. Now... Just before we get into any of the story thing, I'm going to point out that one thing I do love, there's things to love and hate about the modern like streaming method of watching things, but the fact that not every episode has to be that exact length, and you end up with 15 minutes of Jawa on Jawa love story, <laughs> so you can fill out 45 minutes. <laughs> yeah. The fact that like episode one's 45, this one's 30, I like that they're not stretching things. It's Yeah, it's it's... It's a perfect way to do it. It doesn't feel like there's anything. That, uh, they don't have to work it into a time frame. Yeah. I mean, they, they kind of go with whatever the story lends itself to. Now, uh, I have to say, before we get too far into this, I really love the music in this show. Oh, absolutely. Uh, it's composed by Ludwig Göransson. He's a, a, a Swedish composer. The music is awesome. It, it, it kind of reminds me of Spaghetti Western, which I think is the, the overall theme of it, you know, like a Spaghetti Western type of thing but it's really awesome music i think it's it started off strong but i'm kind of wondering if it's still gonna if it's gonna end strong like oh that. okay okay you're talking about the show itself it, yeah well yeah we're not even i mean hopefully we're well we're pretty i think it ends december 27th the last friday it's gonna air yeah I, is, on, is it every week yeah. yeah yeah every friday yeah every friday until then yeah because that kind of threw me off because i thought they were gonna skip the first friday since we had it you know one already come out this week that's yeah. kind of smart on them, though, because they are riding that wave. You know, Eric made a really good point at dinner tonight. He said that the reason why they didn't put it all out at once is so people didn't watch it all on the seven-day free trial. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I would have, with as good as that first episode was, I probably would have binged the whole damn thing that first day. Yeah, right. Because I had a snow day off work that day. I'm kind of glad I can't binge it, though. I feel like I would miss something if I binge no, it. No, that's yeah. cool, but is it already all... Oh, it's all it's all done. Done. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. They've got it in the can. They've actually already started talking about what they're doing for season two now. I mean, John Favreau, uh, you know, the creator, the series creator, which the guy's awesome. Uh, it, you know, anyway, and he's. Yeah, I've never been disappointed by that. I don't think I've ever been. Yeah, I've never. A, a lot of people say Iron Man two, which I love. Yeah, I would see. I always say that's my least favorite MCU movie. But that doesn't mean I dislike it by any stretch. Yeah, right. Like being the bottom of something awesome is still part of something awesome there. So Favreau's rad. So let's get to this, though. Pedro Pascal is playing the Mandalorian. And he's yeah. already kind of let the name slip on social media. Yeah, I couldn't even tell you off the top of my head because I got so nervous reading the article that was like, Pedro Pascal lets it slip. What's the Mandalorian's real name? It's like Jed Thomas or some some bullshit that doesn't matter. I think it's Din Jaren. I've been saying that, but I honestly have. Just, it's just the first thing that pops into my stupid head. I'm not sure what it is. I know I I read it and it's something like that. Din Jaren. Yeah, but they made such a big deal out of it, like he was going to be a secret Skywalker or some dumb oh, shit. Fuck, I'm really glad he's just some <clears throat> dude instead of. 
I think part of the appeal of this, at least to me, because I think this is the best thing Disney's done with Star Wars. The appeal is that it has nothing to do with anybody I know. Yeah, like there's enough there to marry it to the franchise. Like you've got Jawas and you've got Mandalorians. And people speak in Hut. Yeah, and possibly Tatooine. We're kind of on the fence about if that's where we are right now. I'm pretty sure that's where, where yeah. he's at. Yeah. yeah Tatooine. I mean, I mean, with the Jawas and the it, whole. It definitely has a, a, a Tatooine feel to it. Yeah. But they haven't done anything to go out of the way to be like, like literally everything that's always Star Wars is always the Empire versus the Rebels in one way or the other. Even the cartoons they've done are still the same thing over and over. Mm-hmm. And this one is this asshole who is simultaneously a badass, but also kind of sucks. He's got Spider-Man syndrome <laughs> where he can murder a thousand people or beat the crap out of a thousand people, but also land on his face because he does something stupid. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, because he's he's very clean at the beginning. You know, he is clean at the beginning. Very clean. Yeah, I like. Like the- he hasn't seen a lot of action mm-hmm. until until he. I don't want to give away any spoilers or anything. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we're going to try to be as yeah. spoiler yeah. free as we can. I don't know. The good thing about these first two episodes is so far there really hasn't been anything Major. huge to spoil. Like, yeah, there's some things that, are, that we're going to have to talk about to talk about in general, but. I mean, man, the way it started with that bar fight was just oh, yeah. awesome. Yeah, the I, I can already that. tell that. Yeah, the, it, can, the Cantina episodes oh, yeah. are. Yeah, does there, those are amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can bring you in cold or I can bring you or I can bring you in warm or I can bring yeah. you in cold. I mean, is an all time great badass <laughs> line. Yeah. And I've, I've never seen uh, I've never seen quite that use of a Star Wars door, but to use it to cut a man in half is pretty awesome. Yeah. And I love the fact that it wasn't just over the top, stupid, gruesome, like you didn't see him get cut in half. It cuts away perfectly to where you know what happened. Yeah. But it's not like over the top. No, it was it was really well done. And I guess the overall feel of it. You know, when it first opens up there, I don't think the Mandalorian speaks for the first two minutes. I mean, there's he doesn't say anything and until he talks to the guy and says, warm or cold. Yeah, I mean, honestly, through the whole series, he doesn't really talk more than he has to. I no, mean, no, it's, yeah. During episode two where he's thanking the Ugnot guy for his help, that's the most we really get out of him. And he kind of trips over himself like he doesn't really know how to handle himself in a social situation. Yeah, and... uh Speaking of the Ugnaught, I've I have loved uh, Nick Nolte so far. I did not realize that was him either until after the episode was already over. I did. I I, I said that he was somebody else. She was like, but oh, I called it. She was I like, I think that's Gary Busey. <laughs> I mean, and to be fair, you know, Nick yeah. Nolte. Gary They're practically Busey. the same person. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Now, what but. really threw me off is I kept seeing all these articles talking about how great it was, how great a job Taika Waititi did. I was like, who the fuck, what did he do in that series? I thought he was like a producer or something. Did not realize he was IG-11. Oh, was, that robot? Yeah. yeah. Oh, he was my favorite. It was awesome. That robot. That scene was badass. I actually hate that. Spoiler. Yeah, we're going to have to spoil things. Yeah. That's just yeah. the nature spoiler, of the beast. Spoiler. Hate that what happened to that robot happened to that robot. I don't want to spoil. what happened. I don't want to spoil. I mean, I think we're going to see him again. How? Honestly. How is that going to happen? He's a robot. I mean, getting shot in the head to a robot in the same skin shot for a person. He was my favorite character he was so far. I mean, C-3PO I got decapitated and torn well, into 100,000 pieces. But that robot was my favorite. Someone really pointed out that it was like an old Clint Eastwood movie where he was like firing behind his back. And yeah. I, and even though it was a robot, it still got that same feel to it. I mean, it. yeah, he was turning and shooting. and. Uh, this whole show has a Clint Eastwood vibe. Oh yeah, I mean yeah, spaghetti western. Yeah, yeah. the Mandalorian yeah. is the man with no name, absolutely, but more of a doofus sort of. Well, you know, I mean, it depends on which movie you're watching. I mean, you know, Eastwood's uh, like he's he's made mistakes, like in Hang 'Em High, and yeah, you know, stuff. But yeah, I, he's very impulsive. I like the Mandalorian. I like yeah. the I, I like the character of the Mandalorian. I, I was I was so afraid that 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 it was going to be something you know Boba Fett and. Yeah, like too badass. Yeah. Well, yeah. too badass for a guy who got knocked into a pit by a hey, blind man. Hey, hey, I love the fit. You knew that was coming. I knew it was coming. Everyone always likes to somehow cite that Boba Fett being defeated by Han Solo is some kind of diss against him or something. Blind Han Solo eh. stumbling around. Chewie. Han, Chewie. It, it took Han, <laughs> Chewie, and Lando, really. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah. But yeah, I had that, that fear, though, like you said, that he was going to be too badass, like this unstoppable one man killing machine. And they found a good balance between that and sort of 
being an impulsive idiot that gets himself hurt too much. Yeah, I mean, uh, him chasing after that uh, sand crawler was... Yeah, and immediately eating shit. Yeah, just got fucked up. Well, as soon as he got up there, when he finally made it to the top, they just blasted his ass off the top. Yeah, I remember as he was running, sitting there and climbing, sitting there thinking like, why wouldn't they just be ready for him by the time he got his slow ass up there? And they were, in fact, ready for him when he yeah. got his slow ass up there. I, I, yeah, they were. So, so far, though, story-wise... Um, you know, like you've already said, there's not really much that's happened in these first two episodes, but you kind of get the idea of where this is possibly going. I don't know if you have any predictions of what you think is going to happen. Now that we've seen the child, like that's one thing I really like. Cause thank you for calling it the child. Yes. Well, I, I'm really yes. sick of seeing baby yeah. Yoda. Well, actually I'm tearing this out because I'm half fucking deaf from standing in sp- front of speakers at punk shows for <laughs> years, which I'm sure you've got the same problem. I played on the You probably side. got it way worse, honestly, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, I have to watch everything with subtitles on, and Absolutely. nobody has a name in this. It's like You're the Ugnaught, right. the Mandalorian, yep. the child. The Jawas don't count because they're fucking Jawas, which if y'all want to see Jawas explode, the second episode has what you need, oh and my that's God. what I needed. I was I was, I was, was ready to see that rifle in action. But yeah. you you do have the um, the people in the, what, what do you call it, carbonite? Or? Yeah. yeah. And those are the bounties he'd already collected. Yeah. So he has that, you know ability to put people oh on. sure yeah. well yeah, yeah well uh now this is uh it does take place after return of the jedi so you can imagine yeah. that maybe the is since empire they've been able to make so that's what he's doing he he takes his bounties and he puts them in carbonite yeah when we see. see when we see carl weathers character which i don't know if it, they gave him a name he did have a name but i fuck me if i can remember I can't. his or something yeah yeah you're right yeah, because when he goes and he talks to Werner Herzog's a character, yeah. he mentions. Yeah, that was my big one. Where I was like, is that Werner fucking Herzog? And it is, in fact, Werner fucking Herzog. Yeah, he takes the, the bounty pucks back to Carl Weathers. So when he gets the bounties, Carl, he, Carl put, Weathers he puts starts, them in the he starts having the uh, He starts having his ship unloaded. It actually shows you yeah. that you know very briefly. He's unloading the bounties that are frozen in carbonite. Yeah, so at some point, they've gone from, oh, God, maybe this will kill who we're doing to, eh, it works, fuck it. And they just, apparently, they just use it as a normal thing. They've now. also, they've obviously made it a portable version that you can keep on a ship. Yeah, well, I mean, he, yeah, because yeah. he just shoves that what's-his-face <laughs> in there, which Man. apparently that was someone semi-famous too, but I didn't recognize his name. Uh, yeah, I, I feel if like you look up the cast. You had Greedo in there, right? Well, that's just a... A Rodian. A Rodian, yeah. That's oh, not, that's it's not, not actually a Greedo. Greedo. Yeah. Well, we haven't seen anyone that's anyone. Yeah, and I, I really okay. like that, and I hope we keep it that way. I don't want yeah. like a, a Lando Calrissian to pop up out of nowhere. I think keeping it its own thing is going to be the best for it. Yeah. So with it being... It, now, it's it's five years after Return of the Jedi, and then it, before the First Order. So it's the after the Empire's fallen... Yeah, which is why he doesn't want to take Imperial credits, which I thought was awesome. Yeah, I love it. Even he he takes half the amount in calamari squishy money <laughs> Yeah, to, to, instead he, of the Imperial credits. He doesn't even want it. it. Yeah, the Imperial money, which is awesome. So why is that, though? Why? I well, would say it's because the Empire's fallen, so places in the galaxy probably don't accept it where the where the rebels have actually driven them out. Yeah, like if you look at like Germany after World War I, um, the Deutschmark became so useless they were burning it in furnaces to keep warm and i imagine at this point imperial credits are about the same so he's taking what he can get yeah those imperial the... credits are just going to be taking up space in his pocket whereas the calamari squishy money is at least something <laughs> uh, flan which is okay. a dumber name than squishy money let's be real <laughs> flan yeah calamari flan calamari flan <laughs> that now, sounds really nasty is that, actually is that like ice cream made out of squid that's what it sounds like mm, that sounds uh, really good. caramel caramel squid Ugh. Kind of squid. Mm, sounds tasty. The show's been really good about linking things without shoving it in your face. Like it didn't go like, these are from the people of Mon Calamari yeah. because there was a famous general that was, right. what's his face? Okay. Uh, the Mon Calamari general. I can't remember. What, uh, uh, Admiral Akbar. Admiral Akbar. Yeah. Oh yeah that's, yeah. that's right. How could I fucking forget? It's a trap. How yeah. could I forget that? <laughs> I'm going to tell you like, there's a lot of things that would have been like, like, Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, elbow. You like these are from the the Mon Calamari people who had an important admiral and shut the fuck up. Uh, my girlfriend Carissa, who is inches away from us right now, and she's gonna get a shout out here. I was like, you can watch this without knowing shit about Star Wars. Like, here's what you, you need to know: there was an empire, and they got fucked up. That's it. That's all you need to know. Uh, you know, so the whole show kind of gives you an idea of what's going on. I, I do like. Did you see the the show's description? Is like a lone gunman crosses yeah. the galaxy. Spaghetti uh, Western. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. 
Yeah, it's very much got that like cowboy bebop, but firefly. I, I am I, still a little bit confused about the time period. It's of, five years after Return of the Jedi. So yeah. you have Return of the Jedi. Yeah. Five years later. Five years later, here we are. Yeah. Is where we're at. Yes. Yeah, so at this point, they've pretty much given up on the Empire coming back. And we know from... From watching uh, The Force Awakens. That, yeah, like... When, and, well, how far away is that? Well, that's from, about 35 years from this. Oh, that's... Yeah, I mean, it okay. takes place kind of real time if you look at like when Empire came out compared to... It's supposed to be a, basically about a real amount of time from... In our reference from... When yeah. did Empire... When right. did Jedi, uh, Jedi come out? 84? Jedi came out in 82. Okay. 82. <laughs> and then... Last Jedi came out in 2015. I think that's right. Yeah. So that no, uh, time. D- yeah, because 2012 was when Disney purchased uh, Star Wars, and then yeah. so it was yeah 2015. I think that's right. Yeah, because they've uh, so it's between that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We're yeah the first order that that they're battling in the movies hasn't happened yet, and then obviously the Empire. I know that I've I've read the books. I haven't read or I haven't seen the cartoons. Yeah. Yeah, we just started I've, Rebels. I've read more of the books, but yeah, I, I think timeline wise, though, we're, it's just in a spot where it doesn't have to be connected to anything. Yeah, it's just okay. far enough. Like the only important thing to know is that the Empire tanked and took the economy with it, more or less, like mm-hmm. what they built with. But luckily, all these other systems had their own thing. Yeah, and that seems to be what kind of what like what he's dealing with. Uh, I do agree with what you said though about it being approachable from any. I mean. You don't have to know shit about it, really. Yeah, like I, my yeah. mom's got Disney Plus. She got it because of my little sister wanted to watch it. And I told her I think she'd like it, honestly, because she like she loved the shit out of Firefly. Oh, and it's yeah. got that same. If you like anything like that? Yeah. yeah, it's not the same, the same, but it's got sort of the same space western vibe to it. Although this one, I think it's got m- way more of that like traditional western vibe to it. Yeah, I, you know, even uh, as I said earlier, I thought I think the music even sounds. To a degree, I mean, there's there's definitely something modern and spacey about it, but I mean, it has a has a very uh, Sergio Leone type sound to it. Yeah, but at the same time, it's not afraid to like grab onto the sci-fi element and hump it. I mean, he does no. fight a space rhinoceros oh, and rescue a hairy egg that, from it. That hairy egg. The hairy man. All or, right, or just the Jawas eating out of it. Yeah. So he he rescues this hairy egg to trade for parts of his ship that have been stolen. And when the Jawas that want the egg get it, which Jawas, for those not familiar, mm. are these awful little robe-wearing guys that are just eyes and a robe, as far as we can tell. That, that they're junkers. Yeah, they're junkers. They steal shit and sell it back. Yeah, because Please. he was like, that's my stuff anyways. <laughs> yeah. Why do I have to buy that back or trade that back? You yeah. Know? Well, he learned really quickly that if he... <laughs> If he uh, tried it his way, he just got shot. He but, did. He, like, got his, he, he actually got his ass yeah. beat by the Jawas. Yeah. yeah. He, he really did. Yeah. I mean, that's the, that's the old, like how many, how many children can a grown man take before he just goes down because of the numbers? Yeah. That's right. kind of what happened there. Yeah. yeah I, I mean, yeah. I, I love the line. I think he, he says something about, he disintegrated a couple of them because he, he, he absolutely yeah. does. Yeah. I do yeah. love the fact too, that once they realized they could get this egg that they wanted. They were just like, Oh fuck those guys. They got disintegrated. Like my cousin Roy over there. <laughs> fuck Roy. He was kind of a dick anyway. I want this egg. I just want this egg. So we've got this big mystery of like, well, why do they want this egg? Is it like important to them? Or is that, it going to hatch into something cool? His hands rubbing over the hairy egg did something uh, to me that was like, yeah. what the it fuck? It was nasty. Yeah. Like, why why is that so ab- gross? Everything about that scene. Like there's a giant space rhinoceros that just drives him into this mud and muck and oh, awfulness. And you can smell it. it through the TV. Like, you know how awful it is. Like, if you've been to a zoo and smelled like a rhino pen, you know, uh, he's just been driven down into mud and shit. We've we seen mm-hmm. the rhino tail. That was a hippopotamus. No. Animal, nature's gross. Have you, you know? ever seen a hippopotamus? Poop. Shit. Oh, yeah. They, they uh, go off slices, like sprinklers. Yeah. Slices of turd. Mm-hmm. They're splash yeah. zones at zoo, zoos to make sure you don't get covered in turd. It's pretty amazing. I, I, was, I, was, I was waiting for the giant horned, whatever the hell that space rhinoceros well, was. It was, according to the subtitles, it was a mud horn. Mud horn. Which is really not a very inspired name, I'm going to be real. Yeah. But uh, but they get this hairy egg, and you're like, all right, well, what do they want this fucking egg for? And they slice it open and just eat the guts out like it's a goddamn Cadbury egg. <laughs> Man, it, that's what, oh, it, yeah, that's what you said, Cadbury egg. That's exactly yeah. what It I looks said. like yeah. a fucking Cadbury yeah. egg, but it really it's hairy. Does. 
Yeah. I, I was thinking, you know, Munch would just t- totally kick their asses and take that. Because Adam oh, was yeah. like, oh, it's a giant Cadbury. Cadbury. I hate I'm the, like, oh. Yeah, I hate the hairy <laughs> egg more than anything in life. Oh, the yes. hairy egg is weird. Like, yes. I guess the rhino I laid the hairy egg. I, but... I guess. I Well, see, I was... It, I actually had a had trouble with that wrapping my mind my mind around it, and I was like, "Well, I guess on a, in a galaxy far, far away, mammals lay eggs." I don't yeah, know. I mean, that's not, the whole the not sto- those kind of eggs. Yeah, no. <laughs> not, not hairy <laughs> eggs, but it's the like one of my favorite Star Trek episodes, and it's stupid, but I liked it because it was just like, "All right, let's let's explain why the real reason is budgetary reasons." It was like, "Well, why does alien, every alien look like a human with a weird nose?" And there's an episode of something Star Trek. Their, something on their foreheads. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's a whole episode of Star Trek that there was a progenitor species that went around seeding their DNA, and that's why there's 100,000 humanoid species. I think I remember that. It's a great episode, and yeah. it's a really good way that they explained what in real life was, because we don't have the goddamn budget to make rhinoceros people or something. I'm stuck on rhinoceros now. I'm sorry. Well, that's okay. It's, but, uh, it's fair mud horns. Yeah. But, uh, and that's one thing I like there is it was a space rhinoceros. <laughs> But it's it true. at least laid an egg and made it a little alien because that's one thing a lot of sci-fi uh, things are scared to do is make alien things alien. They that, just make them like, well, this is a this is a platypus, but it's a space platypus <laughs> that shoots lasers out of its asshole. I'm gonna be honest with you though. I I would like to see a space platypus now. I'm really genuinely shocked. There's not some shitty like D and D race that's like a. <laughs> like a elf platypus or something. <laughs> that is shocking. Like I always play a kinku, which is a dumbass bird person. There like should that. be a there should be a platypus. I don't know that too. race. I'm not I'm not familiar with that one. They're kind of newer. Okay. Ish. Well, that that, ex- that explains <laughs> it. Yeah. What is this? Uh, we always veer off topic, and we're on D and D now. Accidentally. Yeah, we're way the fuck D&D off. D and D has a a platypus. Well, they have a bird race, oh. and I said that we're just steps away from a platypus race. Oh, and. But yeah, that's reeling that back in there. That's one thing that I wish more uh, sci-fi things would take advantage of is making shit alien. Star Wars does a pretty good job. It always has done a pretty good job of it, honestly. Yeah, I mean, better know, than a lot of. Uh, yeah, I mean Star Wars. Do. Star Wars has a myriad alien species. I mean, the child. I mean, we don't even know the name of their species. Yeah, that was kind of weird for me. I kind of I was talking to someone else about it, and I was like, "Fuck, I look up what they're they're called." Nobody there's knows. never a race, and there's only two of them ever in, yeah. in the series. There's Yoda and Yaddle. I think if you go, if no, you go, actually, there's if you six go, of them. If you go deep enough, there's there's five of them that have six. been over five or six that have been mentioned over the canon over the years. Oh, and like EU yeah. shit and everything. Uh, yeah, yeah. If you go, yeah. If okay, go. I was just talking movies. Uh, yeah, yeah, important you know, to note that I have never really gotten uh, deep Co- into Star Wars, so I don't know a lot of the EU there's, stuff. There's one in Kotor. I don't even remember one in Kotor. There's a lot of them. Maybe it's Kotor too. I played no. both of those, but it's been so long. Yeah, there is one in there. Uh, I believe you. I just yeah, don't remember. A, it. I mean, there's I, not I, a bunch. I think this. Just no, five, I actually think that's where six. most of them come from. But it was okay. Yeah, yeah, but it reminds me of. I'm gonna reel this into a different layer of nerdery here, but like if you play Dragon Ball Xenoverse and you play one of the creatures, it's like Frieza. It's just Frieza race. So now really? we've just no got shit. yeah, like they don't have a race. Huh. So now well, we've just got Yoda race. Calling that thing Baby Yoda is very misleading. It is, and but, that's what they call it—is the the Yoda race. Yeah. But that's not theoretically. Correct, I hope they actually you know. give it a canon name soon, because it's like usually I'm like, let's not fuck with stuff in the past. Well, that's okay to fuck with that. Who cares? They don't have a name yeah. for it. Yeah, so, just give it a name. Who gives a uh, shit? Yeah. I think the species is so rare yeah. that, that they don't have it, that it's not named or I don't know. I, you know, I really can't explain that one. I think they didn't want to give Yoda too much backstory and ruin it. So what really happened? Yeah, like that. I'm genuinely shocked at this point. They haven't done like a boring ass book that was just like the dark history of Yoda and how he accidentally destroyed his home planet. And it's I actually love the Star Wars books. They're not all good. Yes, they are. And I'm offended that you said that. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime they like. Because I love reading. I think the Star Wars books are way better than the movies. All right, what's your favorite Star Wars book? Oh, I love when they, um, the one where they're talking about like the off characters. What one is that? Well, they have a bunch of tales books, like yeah, tales the, of the, Bounty the Hunters. tales, and they have the like the little guy and the I don't remember what it's called, but I think it's I think you're thinking of Tales of the Bounty Hunters. Yeah, I think that's it. The yeah. one that tells about. Boba Fett escaping from the Sarlacc. Yeah, but they also have 
other. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of different yeah, stories. Yeah. Oh, there's a hundred. Because I've read yeah. some of the there's comics. Like, no, not the comics. I read the books. Oh, yeah. The, yeah. Some of the comics have been really good, too. Yeah, I actually remember. I'm forgetting remember, into Extended Universe. Yeah, I remember Alex for the longest time tried to get me to read, uh, what was that one, Legacy? With uh, Horny Darth Maul? Darth what? Talon. No. Darth Talon, yeah. No. Uh, was that? <laughs> yeah, it was not good. Uh, was that Legacy? Yes. It was yes, Legacy. Because like he kept telling me how it was amazing and great <laughs> and had to read it. And I was like, why is there a titty Sith? Yeah, and it has the uh, the... The Jedi character, Cade Skywalker. Cade Skywalker. He, he's like tatted up and yeah. does and drugs. We had Darth Crate because he likes Crate dragons, and Crate's a stupid name. You know what I did like about that though? I did like Crate's. I do drugs so that so that Force ghosts can't visit me because yeah, he, he he does straighten up at one point in that, and then he sees he sees Luke, and he's like, "Son of a bitch." Yeah. I don't think I got that far. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Yeah, I just remember asking him like, "Why is the why is one of the main villains wearing a bikini all the time?" And he had some shitty excuse for me. What is but, the name of that race that has the two Twi'leks? Twi'leks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what she is. She's a yeah, but it, Twi'lek. Yeah, but it's like they've got it's the same problem that Star Trek has with the uh, Orions, where it's like it's the horny race. No, it's the race, so you could show cleavage a lot. Let's be real. We know, it, <laughs> except for the Big Show was an Orion too. Really? Oh yeah, it's in uh, Enterprise, I think, or it might have been Deep Space Nine. Because the Deep Big Space, Show, the yeah, uh, because like the dude, the Big Show. Oh, the Rock was a uh, fuck Bajoran. So in, in, in what show? The Rock was in Voyager okay. as a Bajoran, I never and I'm pretty Voyager. sure Enterprise. It might. Have been Deep Space Nine that had a big show as an Orion? Man, Enterprise was awesome. I remember that one. Yeah, I always remember. I didn't watch it forever because everyone shit on it. Oh, it's so good. Other than the god-awful theme song that has now grown on me to the no, point that, that I love it. I'm about to say, okay, yeah. all right, you're good. I It's one of those things that I love, but I can also admit that it's terrible. It's awful, but it hits all the right notes. Yeah, at this, I remember me and our friend Terrence getting super high at like four in the morning Singing that song at the top of our lungs when we were roommates. Sing it. It's been a long oh, time. Sing it. No, no, no. Getting like, from there to here. The Star Trek. It's been a long road. Have you listened to us? No. <laughs> yeah. I don't blame I, you. I have to go pee. Smart move. <laughs> okay. Well, are you going to go pee? No. Okay. <laughs> That's I right. want to hear the song. Stay there. Oh, That's just, all we got. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We're not oh. going to continue with that. So, uh, okay. <laughs> any predictions on where this is going? Um. Honestly, I'm kind of hope that they keep it simple. Uh, I hope that it's just, you know, the Empire trying to go after the child and the Mandalorian having his, like, weird coat of honor. Because they always have that. The bounty hunter characters and everything always have the, like, well, I will unblinkingly murder 700,000 people, but here's this kid, so fuck you. And I kind of hope they go with it. And it's kind of a weird situation where the quote unquote child in this is 50 years old. It is. And has f- super magic, f- space magic powers. But, uh. Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's obviously force adept. Yeah, which that was as weird. I'm interested in seeing where they go. And I did love the scene of him eating a whole frog oh, that was and awesome. the Mandalorian just getting vaguely like, spit that out. Ugh. And just, <laughs> it was very. He just gave up. It was such a, a parent moment. Yeah. Because I remember, I've always seen, I don't have any kids myself, but I've watched y'all tell your kids to do something. And when they don't, just immediately be like, ah, oh, fuck it, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> and that's kind of, I got that vibe off of when he was like, spit that out. Ugh. All right. Well, I mean, mine are basically the same. I, I feel like he's not going to turn this kid in. No, I mean, and I do hope that, I hope we see IG-11 again. Obviously, there's other bounty hunters looking. That's why he keeps finding the fobs. You know, those guys that tried to kill him in that, uh, uh what I don't want to say Gulch cave, but yeah, 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 yeah that it, they dropped one, yeah, they're whatever Bosk was. That's that's when we were talking, exactly. we had talked before about that trailer where we we're like, Looked I like think that's IG 88 yeah. Bosk, yep, and it's IG 11, and who knows what the fuck, I don't know, what some those... other, some race, the uh, the Ugnot named the race, I don't remember what it was, yeah, I've forgotten already. It's one of it's yeah. not important, no, it's it's not that big a deal, but overall, I, I think it's awesome, I think it's going to be good. Yeah, and one thing I'm going to toss in here that I didn't mention in the main thing is I love the fact that they have integrated CG and puppetry so well. Oh, man, isn't that the truth? Wow. They, yeah. they use practical effects when they can, and when they can't, they bust out that CG. 
and like you couldn't do the hairy the hairy rhino, rhino with its hairy egg with puppets. No, 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 you couldn't. But but what can be is, and it's awesome. I am genuinely unsure if the child is CG or a puppet. I feel like at times it's it's what it's both. It might be both. I, I, I because like when it sits up in the little carrier it's in the little egg carrier, it looks. To be a puppet. Well, it looks like Gizmo from it Gremlins kinda, is what it looks like. Yeah, like a little robotic pu- puppet. I, I don't. I mean, was the Ugnot a puppet? I think he was just a short dude in a costume. But then the head was like articulated, like an. I mean, yeah, probably with puppeteers. Yeah, it's it's hard to tell. I could see it being a green screen situation, and I can see it being a puppet. Uh, but I think it's a good thing that we're not entirely sure. I think it's awesome, and I I, I, I think I, I mentioned this to Munch while we were eating. That it uses the practical effects because it won't age so severely. Actually, I think that's what he said. It, like it'll 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 keep it from aging so horribly. Yeah, I mean, you can look at Jurassic Park and see where they used a combination of the two. Mm-hmm. They only use CG when they had to, and when they did, they put effort into it. And yeah. with the Mandalorian, you can see that too. Like, like there's one scene where you just see a lizard skittering across some rocks, and it looks fucking awesome. Yeah, it does. And you know that they're CG because you're not stupid, but. Uh, yeah, Maybe there's some dumbasses right. out there that don't. I don't know, but it looks great regardless. Yeah, and it's it's not a it's not an over the top a yeah. mixture of CG with practical, and I, you know, like when he's riding the the, the blurg, the like fish lizard creature on two legs with yeah. two short little arms. I mean, even that thing at points looked real. You know, I mean, <laughs> yeah, it reminded me. There's a weird little lizard thing you can ride in Elder Scrolls Online. And that's what I always wrote, wrote everywhere. Uh-huh. And fuck me if I can't remember what the hell that was called, but it reminds me of that. So it even has an accidental bit of nostalgia there. That's awesome. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I just, if they keep the, the trailer on now, they bring in other bounty hunters and they can do whatever they want. That's the, that's the cool thing about this is the fact that they haven't married themselves to the, the generic star Wars lore. They can do whatever the fuck they want. They can bring in shit that we've seen before, like race wise. They can bring in some new aliens. I want to see an alien. One of my favorite things from at, from the first Star Wars, New Hope, Star Wars, whatever you want to call it, mm-hmm. is the dumbass alien that's just Satan. Like he's, yeah, the, he's just the straight demon. He's just thing. straight up Satan. I, I know the one you're talking about. Yeah. I want I want to see that race more. I just want to see a bounty hunter that is inexplicably <laughs> a 1940s era. <laughs> pitchfork team i want him to use a little pitchfork and shoot him at the mandalorian i want some dumb shit you've about hurt me there that's a good one that's a great one they've already brought in one of my least favorite things about the original star wars are the jawas i fucking hate them why i don't know why why. do you hate the jawas you you ever just inexplicably hate something and you're not sure why yeah dc comics yeah well no there's plenty of reasons (laughs) uh i actually like dc comics a lot not lately for actually, the past like two years, they've been bad. But. I really do too. I, that's a, that's a joke. Yeah, but you ever been watching something? You're like, I fucking hate that thing. And someone goes, Why do you hate that? And you're like, I don't know. I don't even know. It just does and something to me. Since I was a kid, I've just hated the Jawas, and I don't know why. I can't see what the Jawas have done to earn your hatred. I think it's because they're buttholes. Like they're just stealing people's shit all the time. Yeah, that pisses me off. Yeah, I think though they're on a planet that's shitty. It's a fucking desert. I mean, what else are they gonna do except steal people's shit? Yeah, I get that. I mean, they're kind of, you know, they're scrappers, they're junkers. They, Uncle Owen would never have found R two and C three PO had been for Jawas. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna be real too. I had a huge fear when they were like, the target is 50 years old. It was gonna be Uncle Owen, and I was gonna be pissed and turn it off. Now, now, I, now we have absolutely seen his crispy ass skeleton. You no, know, I knew it was gonna be something dumb like that. But it wasn't though. It was gonna be him or Baru, and they're gonna be like, they didn't actually die. It's fucking rad that it's not. I mean, yeah. I was a little. I, I I've got to admit, I was taken aback, sort of at the baby Yoda or at the baby at the child. Yeah. I was a little taken aback by it. I'm like, I don't know. But then the second episode alleviated my fears. Uh, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to tell you as a grown ass man, the fact that it is goddamn adorable every time I see it really it helps that. with that. It is. When it's like that. waddling around, like I want to play with this frog. So, you know, at the beginning of episode two, it, it, it's trying to force heal him, but he keeps, he keeps just putting it back in its crib. Yeah. Like I wasn't sure what it was doing at first. And then later on, I'm like, Oh yeah, oh, that's that doing. makes sense now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's totally what he was doing. At first, I thought he was just being a little creepy asshole. I wonder if every, every member of that species is force adept. I mean, so far, at least the two that we've seen, 
in the movies are. I don't I don't know about the EU ones, but well, the extended universe ones are are uh, yeah. I mean, they're in Kotor. You know, they were uh, like Jedi teachers. Yeah. What's gonna really break my heart is when like the next to the last episode they're gonna be like, we knew this would be force adept because that ep- that whole race is made of midi chlorians. Oh my god! And I'm gonna throw something through my TV. So don't Google them then. God damn it! <laughs> because I remember see I we did earlier, and Yoda's like they was like talking about Yoda's midichlorian count, and it's like forty two hundred or some bullshit, super high. So. There's, I mean, I mean, at least they're not Jesus Christ like Anakin Skywalker. Yeah, Space Jesus. Yeah, I mean, it, it, at least that didn't happen. Sometimes I forget about Space Jesus. That's just remember that Darth Vader is Space Jesus. Yeah, but also an asshole. What a redemption! He story. got lit on fire that one time. <laughs> I do like the Mandalorian trying to catch everything on fire with his flamethrower arm. You know what? If I had a flamethrower arm, I would use it a lot. <laughs> fucking there. a! When he just loses his temper with the Jawas, and just like, how about it. this bitch? <laughs> and just fucking tries to light them on fire. Oh, that shit's amazing. It's great. Uh, and he, he he even tries it with the mud horn. Yeah, it doesn't to no effect. I'm gonna be real though. I don't like the fact that he killed it with his little bitty knife. I, you know what? I feel like I, I missed something. I feel like th- that he must have, man, he must have hit a fucking artery. I don't know that. I, I felt the same way. I've actually, I've, I watched it twice. I, I watched it a second time today and went, how'd that little knife kill that thing? Yeah. Like part of me wants to, I guess we've yeah, got to just push it off as like, well, he knows what he's doing, but. Or he just got lucky. Or he got lucky, which is also possible because through that whole fight, it seemed like he was just getting his ass kicked and was desperately trying. Well, I mean. Let's be honest, he would have died if the child didn't stop the mudhorn from killing him. Yeah, true. I mean, he was about, he was done. He was given up. Yeah, no, let me tell you something stupid it reminds me of. And there was an old, old thing with, uh, oh, I know Kane was the bad guy in wrestling, oh, WWF. Oh, yeah. And I want to say it was Shawn Michaels running from him, but don't quote me on that. It may have been another little guy. Okay. But I just remember him running backwards and like grabbing chairs and like kendo sticks and stuff and flinging it at him. Mm -hmm. And he kept falling over and getting his ass kicked. And it really reminded me of that where he was just desperately like, well, maybe this will work. Nope. I'm dying. (laughs) Yeah. This sucks. He he was just just totally ready to throw the towel in. Yeah. And until the child did it and then got plum tuckered out and took himself a little nappy nap, a a long nap. And you could see that the Mandalorian was concerned, even though he does not take his helmet off. And I never, ever, 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 ever want him to take his helmet off. Yeah. Let's go ahead and actually drop that in there. The fact that he's so good at showing emotion through a helmet. Through a full set of body armor. You don't see a square inch of flesh on him. No, you really don't. Do you see his neck ever? I mean, if so. I mean, maybe his neck. But like... I've just seen so many people online already demanding that he remove his helmet. Did we learn nothing from the Sylvester Stallone Judge Shred movie? I feel like that they haven't taken that lesson to heart. Yeah, I mean, compare that to the Carl Urban one, where he never takes that that goddamn helmet off once, and that movie's so good. You cannot compare them because they're not comparable. (laughs) One is far superior to the other. One is so bad, it's hilarious, and if you want to get drunk and watch it, fine. I don't think so. The other one... I can't even watch the Stallone one. I've never tried since I was young, but uh, I'm sure I thought that's the one you were referring to about getting drunk. Yeah, that's the one I'm talking about. The Carl Urban Dread movie is legit awesome. awesome. No, that movie's great. Like If you like sci-fi action movies... That's one of the best ones of the past 20 years. I easy. wonder if Judge Dredd is somehow based on Boba Fett. Honestly, I don't. They were made around the same time. Were they? I mean, they were both in the 70s, weren't they? Or no, 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 because Empire didn't come out till 82. No, Empire 80? came out in 79. <laughs> yeah. Actually, Judge Dredd might predate him. We probably should have we'll looked have to look this into up. that. We'll have to look into that. Yeah, we'll follow well, this up. I on mean, a, anyway, guys, that's an interesting idea. Like, I wondered, like, who came first? Yeah. Not that they're identical or anything. I'm just saying, yeah. because immediately when I started watching this Mandalorian show, I was like, oh, this kind of reminds me of Judge Dredd. But surely it's, well, I mean, fuck, who knows? It could be that way. Yeah. Now, my only fear for this show yeah. is in episode one, we had this little flash of him showing his childhood. Uh, if we get a whole episode... It's like, let me tell you how I became a foundling. I'm going to skip that episode and hope it doesn't have anything interesting in it because those are the worst. Do you, do you believe that a foundling means that 
he's not actually a Mandalorian and that a Mandalorian tribe has adopted him? Or do you think that means that the Mandalorians were scattered and then they were found and recovered and brought back to where they should be? Because it, it does kind of show a little hive of yeah. Mandalorians. Because I think he mentions uh, whenever they try to take his guns and he says, I'm a Mandalorian, that's part of my religion. Part of, I love that. I, think, I don't think necessarily you have to be born on a certain planet to be a Mandalorian. I think it's like Mandalorians like being a... Uh, a Buddhist or something like you can just move yourself into it. Like I think, Oh, you can just become a Mandalorian. I thought they were from Mandalore. I'm, I think like they're originally, but it's kind of like the Sith. Cause like the Sith are originally a race called the Sith. I never thought about them not being that. This is just me throwing shit at the wall here. I have no, I'm basing this on nothing. Okay. So if it, it, so you, so, well, you know, I'm gonna have to look into this. I I didn't, I, I, I've never actually thought about that. Can can anyone be a Mandalorian? The fact that he referred to it as being his religion, like he didn't say that's something my people do. He specifically said, I can't give up these. They're part of my religion. And whenever they want his armor, the Ugnaught says, no, he's a Mandalorian. You can't take his armor. There's a war that goes, it, it was all about Beskar steel. Like that's why that's so important to them. It's something about that. That was the only resource on their planet, Mandalore. Yeah, and I've got to tell you right now, before the first episode of The Mandalorian, I have never heard the phrase Beskar steel. So I think that goes in with the whole you don't need to know shit. But I was yeah, very yeah, yeah, you're right. through context. I was able to figure out within seconds that it was about, matters to them. Yeah, this is important to their people. Yeah, well, it's from their home planet. It's from their home world. Now, my speculation on the whole foundling thing is that. He was he was found somewhere, living with, well, looks like his parents were killed by the fucking flashback. But yeah, he was somewhere not obviously not with other Mandalorians because he's not even wearing a helmet, and that they found him and they brought him into the back into the tribe where he should be. Yeah, my guess is it's gonna, and I hope this is like a five minute exposition when they finally reveal it because they're uh-huh. going to, and I don't want it to be a whole thing. <laughs> yeah, you know they're going to. My guess is they took him in as like a slave or something, and they were like, oh, actually, this guy whips ass. Let's make him. He's like, all right, let's do it. We'll just have to see. And I hope that's it. Like, I don't need this. They're doing well with their whole man with no name thing. Yes, they are. And I hope they stick with it because uh, so too. it's a very less is more situation. I agree with that. Yeah. I, I agree with that. I'm looking forward to seeing more of it. Yeah. Like. I was so excited after episode one and episode two has been great. I and do. I hope we're not sitting here in December going, remember how great it was when it fucking started? And now I, look where we are. I I am happy that we'll get to see the end of it this year. Yeah. Like I wasn't sure how long it was or if they were going to split it up. I mean, and eight episodes could be short, but the, sometimes things are better when they are. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm a very much a mini series person. I've been saying for years and in, in comics, even that, I don't like long running series drawn out. Yeah. Like, Just, like if something goes to issue 78, I'm like, well, it's been a long run. I like it better when it's like, all right, this is Spider-Man rage of the ass kicker. Number one of five. And I can read that five issue story and be done with it. Yeah. Right. I mean, they do, they do. They usually play better. Yeah, I mean, there's notable exceptions like Jason Aaron's sure. Thor run. I wouldn't cut that apart for anything. I would anything. say that that this new uh, Spider-Man by uh, Nick Spencer. Nick, Nick Spencer is pretty damn awesome. Well, if the store wouldn't have sold out of every copy we had like 20 times, I'd be able to keep up with it. But well, I only got to read through eight because I had to start selling my copies that I was holding for myself. Yeah, that's a good sign, though. Yeah, I yes. had that same problem with Immortal Hulk, where I wish I would have been reading uh, it. But tell me about it. Yeah, I had the first two. I think three was the one that got all hot. Yeah, and that's yeah. that's how it always goes. That's, that is the way it goes. Yeah, I, I dropped Avenging Spider-Man, the issue before Carol Danvers became oh, Captain Marvel. Oh, fuck. So, Nine? Yeah. Man, that's a hot one. Yep, I stopped at issue eight because I was like, this is kind of boring, and this is that's what it got me. Yeah, right. Are well, you ready to wrap up? Yeah, I think uh, I think we said about, about all there is to say so far. I look forward to, I think we should get, we're going to do another one of these, I imagine, oh, when yeah. it's over with. I don't think we're going to, no, we're not going to stop talking about this, I don't think. Yeah, I mean, we're going to, if y'all want to come into the shop sometimes when they're there or even send us a message, we're ready to jerk off about this show because I mean, it's awesome. And if you hate it, if you can find something wrong with it, I mean, the only, the only thing I've actually seen that could have been wrong, and I can't take credit for this, uh, Marshall saw it when I was, I was watching it with him. When he shoots the guy at the beginning and the and the door comes down and cuts the gun half, Marshall just goes, "Well, how the fuck they get out of there?" He just shut. He just he just broke the door. I'm like, God damn it! I didn't think about that. Star Wars has a long history of janky things. Like, 
Before, it's, it's it's okay. Yeah. I can deal with it. Yeah. I'm just saying that's the only thing I've seen. I'm, I'm saying if anyone can point out anything wrong with this show, I, I, I haven't seen anything other than that. You know, I am unrepentantly on Twitter a whole lot, and mm-hmm. I'm gonna tell you, no matter what, how good something is, no matter how cool it is, it's always detractors. Always people shitting. I've yet to see a single person shitting on it. And I'm not saying everyone yeah. in the world loves it when they I, watch it, but the fact that I haven't seen anything bad about it yet, it's a good sign. It had an 80, it has an 87 percent on Rotten Tomatoes and a 90 or a 9.1 out of 10 is its overall score. I mean, I think nine out of ten is a good score for it so far. Fuck I mean, yeah, I do too. I might ch- amend that later. But yeah, we may. It's not perfect, but as it's the, awesome. As the story unfolds, we'll 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 try to keep you guys updated. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, enjoy your weekend, and uh, we'll be we'll be back at you soon. All right, thanks. I had a lot of fun re-listening to this episode as the editor, and I noticed uh, AJ and I, uh, well, we're dumbasses. That's a capital D-U-M-B-A-S-S-E-S. We messed up a couple dates that should be at least driven into our collective conscience. Star Wars was first released May 25th, 1977, which we didn't mention that one, so we didn't get to fuck it up. However, we did fuck up Empire and Jedi. Empire was released May 21st of 1980, and Return of the Jedi was released May 25th of 1983. We do make mistakes, often. Call us out. We're big boys and girls. We can take it. Thanks for listening, guys.